August 15 marked the beginning of uh, President Barack Obama's uh, Deferred Action for Childhood Arrivals Plan. How will this program impact the Haitian community? To answer this question and much more, we invited Patricia Elise from the Haitian Lawyers Association. Patricia is a managing partner of the Elise Hernandez Law Firm. Thank you, Patricia, for being here. Thank you, Farah, for the invitation. Well, Patricia, we'll start uh, with a question that everybody will be asking themselves. Uh, mm -hmm. What is the difference uh, between the DREAM Act and the Deferred Action for, uh, for Childhood Arrivals? Okay. Well, the DREAM Act, first of all, hasn't passed yet. It's still stuck in Congress. And the DREAM Act, if it ever passes, and hopefully it will, what it will do for young immigrants currently in the U.S. is that it will give them a path to citizenship, which means first they'll be allowed to apply for their green cards and then eventually apply to become U.S. citizens. On the other hand, Deferred Action for Childhood um, Arrivals is not an immigration status at all. It's actually an immigration benefit or a privilege that's given to qualified young immigrants by DHS or the Department of Homeland Security. Now, the intent of the administration in coming up with deferred action for young immigrants is to shield these young immigrants who came in when they were kids, who were brought to the U.S. illegally by their parents when they were children or toddlers, it's to shield them from being deported or the fear of being deported. And so, uh we see in the Haitian community, it seems like there's uh, a misconception mm -hmm. of uh, that the, the, the Deferred Action for Childhood Arrivals that they call so DACA yes. is only for Spanish but not Haitian. And I heard that on, on radio. No, that's definitely wrong. Um, deferred Action is actually for all young immigrants. So y you don't have to be from any specific country. So the qualifications actually to apply for Deferred Action um, an applicant will have to send a series of documents to USCIS, which shows that they're currently under the age of 31 and that they're currently in the United States illegally, which means they have no valid immigration status. So they'll have to prove that they either entered into the U.S. with no immigration status at all, or if they entered with, for example, a tourist visa, that that status has expired. They also have to prove that they entered the U.S. before reaching the age of 16, and that they've lived here continuously since 2007. So there's no country-specific requirements. They also have to show that there are no criminal, serious criminal issues in their past and that they meet the educational requirement, being they're currently in high school, or they graduate from high school, or they have their GED, or they're a member of the Armed Forces or the Coast Guard. So if you meet those qualifications, it doesn't really matter where you're from, you will qualify for a deferred action. And I uh, remember uh, two years ago, uh, yes. we uh, Haitian have been granted for, uh, for the TPS, the Temporary Protected Status, mm -hmm. uh, following the aftermath of the earthquake in 2010. Yes. And um, as a lawyer, and uh, you, are, you are really involved in the, uh, in the community, in the Haitian community, um, have you seen many Haitians uh, apply for the TPS? Unfortunately, no. A lot of Haitians who qualified for TPS actually did not take advantage and they can no longer apply. TPS, unlike deferred action, they're similar in the sense that if someone gets TPS or someone gets deferred action, they'll be given temporary protection from being deported and they'll also have work authorization. However, while deferred action focuses on young immigrants, TPS focuses on immigrants that are in the U.S. who cannot go back to their home country because of the current state of their home country. For example, if the home country has a civil war going on or a natural disaster like we had in Haiti in 2010, which is why we got TPS. Now, to qualify for TPS, there's a period of time which you have to send in your application. And for Haitians, the deadline was November 15th of last year. And why they failed to apply? And when we know that there's the, the needs were, were there, mm -hmm. why is that? I think it's mostly miseducation, and a lot of them seem to be scared to send their information to USAIS to begin with. Unfortunately, those who did not take advantage of TPS, so back last year and before, they didn't send their application before November 15th, the only way they'll be able to apply for deferred action is if they meet the qualifications, meaning they came in before they were 16, they're under the age of 31, 
So someone who came into the U.S. right before the earthquake or right afterwards will not be able to take advantage of deferred action. So it's a very big issue because uh, we, as a community, we're missing so many opportunities. Yes. And to expand the community and to expand also our level of education. Right. And um, is there um, a way that how, um, the different organization, um, the community organization the com uh, in the Haitian community, is there a way you combine your resources together and you work to try to, 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 um, to, to help in this situation? There are. Um, the Haitian Lawyers Association, there is American Justice for Immigrant, Just for Immigrant Justice. They come together and they try to have community partnerships and programs and outreach. However, the best way of getting information is going through to the source. Just go on the USCIS website, which is USCIS.gov, and you'll find all the explanation, explanations there written down for the qualification for TPS, the, qualifi the qualifications for deferred action as well. And uh, is there a fee for the deferred action? Yes. The application process, it's $465, which will cover the application itself, your fingerprints, in the work authorization document. Now, unlike the naturalization application, so the application to become a citizen, there are no fee waivers generally for deferred action, which means um, you'll most likely have to pay the $465 unless you meet the very specific exceptions. And uh, you as a, um, as a young uh, lawyer, uh, what is the biggest um, challenge for you to, 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 to educate the community on that? Well, first, just getting them to listen, to be honest. Um, a lot of them tend to listen to their peers, which, who are also misinformed. So I think it's really important that we continue these outreach programs, you know, having attorneys from the Haitian Lawyers Association coming on television and reaching out to the community and going on the radio and just getting the right information to the right people. And also, it's really important for the Haitian community to understand that for their immigration purposes, they need to be contacting attorneys. And the reason for that is attorneys are licensed by the Florida Bar and they're trained because immigration application at first seemed to be simple, but there's a lot of hidden dangers in them. And attorneys are trained and they're able to handle these hidden, these hidden problems if they were to come up. And something also for deferred action, you only have one shot at the application. Meaning if you go to someone that's not an attorney and they make a big mistake on your application and it's denied because of that mistake, you're not going to have an ability to reapply. You're not going to have an ability to send in an appeal because it's a one-shot thing. And also, there's always the threat of being sent to removal proceedings, which is very serious. Let's say you didn't qualify to begin with for deferred action because let's say you have some criminal issue that you didn't know about or that you didn't really understand. And because of that issue, you get sent to removal proceedings. If you had an attorney that was helping you, they'd be able to see that even before it became an issue in the first place. And uh, is it true that they resumed the, the deportation in, for Haitians? Unfortunately, yes. They have resumed deportations to Haiti. It's not everyone, and we don't really have a lot of detailed information concerning who exactly they're sending back. But yes, they did start deporting Haitians back to Haiti earlier this year. And uh, what's that? We don't know. Okay. <laughs> Unfortunately, we don't know. And, uh, but this is a very uh, important issue. Because very important and very serious. Because they, 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 they were supposed to stop all the, 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 the deportation. Yes, yes. And I know that Malin Bastien from FUM recently, earlier this year, she went to Haiti and she spoke to people who were deported um, back to Haiti from Miami and other cities in the States. And it's a very serious problem. They're sending people who are not even criminals back to Haiti, and it's 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 a big issue right now. So, um, so if I understand, even uh, with the TPS, um, we uh, the uh, we 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 have a very serious uh, um, immigration challenge in the Haitian community right now. Yes, which is why it's really important for people to educate themselves on immigration issues and to c take advantage of these immigration benefits that are made available to them, like deferred action. And now, uh, so. Now, the deferred action uh, for childhood arrivals, or mm -hmm. DACA, now is available for the Haitians. And so, um, Patricia, your last word for, uh, for the community and for, for, for the viewers. Well, 
the most important thing that I'd like to say is make sure that they educate themselves. It's very important to know what's going on. Go on the USCIS.gov website. Read exactly what the qualifications are. Don't listen to so-and-so who thinks that. Go ahead and educate yourself. And in case if someone is not really comfortable in, uh, on internet, so why, why, is there any other option? They can also reach out to any attorney or to, um, for example, different organization in the community like FUM, like Satla, for example, um, and they'll, they'll guide them to who to speak to. Okay. Thank you very much, uh, Patricia. And um, so um, we will continue the uh, discussion about uh, the immigration issue in the Asian community, and hopefully we will get back uh, uh, to our program. Thank you.